Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Tech Sales Crafts with uh, me, James Hounslow. And today we have another brilliant founder from Israel, David Primor, on the show. David, how are you doing today? Fine. How are you? I'm yes. good. I'm good. Um, fresh from a uh, a trip to uh, to Tel Aviv, so I've had the uh, the sunshine. Um, but uh, really looking forward to our conversation. Now, David, you are uh, co-founder and CEO of Sinomi. Uh, sign yeah. me, I should say. Yeah, this is right. And um, you're in the early stages, but you guys have, have done really well in the first uh, three years of uh, your growth story. Um, we're going to hear all about it today. I'm super excited to share this with people. But as always, as a way of getting started, uh, David, you could just give us a, uh, a brief overview as to uh, who you are from the beginning to uh, to when, we, uh, when you launched uh, this business. I'm David, out of Israel living in Yerzalia, which is nearby the beach, not far away from Tel Aviv. Our office, Sinomi office is in Tel Aviv. Um, spent many years in the A200, uh, Israel uh, Cyber Intelligence, mm. have been a uh, lieutenant colonel. And then I had the privilege to uh, join a team that established the Cybersecurity Authority in Israel. And I was uh, responsible for the technology, um, building the national cert, building um, team that developed the um, incident response from a national perspective. So I spent about three and a half years um, understand the, the big cyber problems from national perspective and understand that there are some things that only the industry can uh, uh, can do. So um, I decided to start the Synomi. Love it. Um, did you always think that you were going to be a, uh, a founder? Of a, or be an entrepreneur, I should say. Yeah, yeah. And the first, the first word uh, when I was three years old was entrepreneur. So always wanted to Love be. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Um. So you live on the beach. What's it like living on the beach? One thing that um. So this was my fourth trip to uh to Tel Aviv, and I have a lot of ignorance around Tel Aviv where it is. I didn't know you could. I didn't know you could surf on the Mediterranean. But uh, are you a surfer? realize that people um surf i surf a little bit i'm not an expert what i do like to do i like to swim in uh, in the open mediterranean yeah um and i can say that it's a little bit similar to being in a startup because you're doing something that you like yeah it's you have some risks yes like, uh, encountering jellyfish in the middle yes or boats yes and you put some some uh, safety um, measures and you always have to be in tension so uh really like to do that um walking in the beach running in a beach so mm. uh yeah so i always like to um kind of start with how military life set you up for being a uh, entrepreneur and you had quite like there's some super super clever people that obviously join the military and, and and specialist side of it where you've been at um you had quite a a good career within the um the military um how did did, did you when you entered the military did you aim for that um or was that just a byproduct of, of what happened you say that you had uh, some some good commanders that convince you to stay in the same place i've never uh, uh, thought that i will be so many years but i enjoyed every moment I didn't think I'm going to the government, but I felt that I could uh, uh, have a, a great influence. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, life um, is uh, something that you cannot predict. Yeah. Um, I remember, for example, I did my first degree in electrical engineering, and I said I will never do a master. Yeah. And uh, I didn't tell to the audience, to, uh, uh, to our listener, but... Uh, uh, I have a PhD in uh, um, electrical engineering. I did it at CERN in Geneva for the big particle accelerator. And if uh, you, you ask me, um, after the two years studying in the Technion in Haifa, um, electrical engineering was very, very difficult. Mm. To be a, a doctor? No way, no way. Would you be lieutenant colonel? No way. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> To achieve these things, like, even though you may not have set out to uh, to do them, but what's involved? Because they're hard, aren't they? Is it a lot of theory, a lot of studying? Yeah, of course, it's uh, it's it's difficult. It's not as difficult as uh, 
establishing a startup, I must okay. say. Um, actually, I enjoyed this uh, period because you get all your uh, independence and you could uh, pick your own research and you have talented people to work with. Yeah. So I guess uh, what is uh, common about my career is working with extraordinary people. So it's starting yeah. with uh, um, people in the IDF in A200, then people in the government. Of course, people at CERN from all over the world, the brightest people coming there and working in a collaboration with 34 countries. It's uh, a one-time uh, experience. And, uh, and now in, in a startup, it's, it's mine. So I'm the co-founder and I'm trying to pick every one of uh, um, uh, the members um, or the partners, let's yeah. say, in, in our journey, the employees. And uh, I feel that we have uh, a great team and I enjoyed being there. I've, I've just returned um, yesterday for a trip to quit. Um, we, uh, we have developers in, in many countries, in the UK, in Israel, in Moldova, or even some in India. And uh, we all gather together because it's, it's uh, although working remotely, it's very important to meet physically. And uh, we did it uh, f uh, the first time in Crete. Uh, and it was so great to meet people face to face and to realize that uh, for me, I, I felt like uh, I, I meet my children, yeah. actually, and uh, feel so proud to see them, to, uh, um, to have fun with them. So, uh, um, so people, this is all about people. Love that. Yeah, it's, it, the thing being is the one thing I've learned over the, um, uh, the 20 odd years I've been doing this is that products really great but it's the people, it's the talent that take it, enhance it and uh, and get you to where you want to be. Probably great if you could give um, an overview of what Sinomi is. And also, when did you come up with the idea of what you saw, of the problem you solve? Sinomi tried to, to help eventually SMBs, small and medium businesses and mid-market to be better protected. Mm -hmm. When I... Um, um, did my role in the government, trying to help uh, the Israel country to be protected against uh, national attacks or, or other criminal attacks. I realized that there is a big gap, especially for small and medium businesses and mid-market businesses to be protected because they don't know how to do that. Yeah. That time I thought it's not, it should not be so complicated. Yeah, uh, we know that big companies, enterprise have uh, CISO, chief information security officers. They are clever. They studied uh, uh, cybersecurity. They know what to do. They could prioritize the off efforts and then realize the risks and understand what they should do. It's not the case for small and medium businesses. And the fact that uh, attackers are using this fact and attack those companies because they are the wicked with the weakest link and make them very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I thought that many uh, cyber solutions are aimed to big enterprise, very sophisticated, help the CISO in another niche, and someone has to take care of these uh, SMBs and mid-market. So this is my passion. Love uh, this was my vision. And uh, it was not so popular at that time, I, yeah. I, I must say. Uh, everybody told me that it's complicated, difficult, um, why not to, uh, to get all the knowledge, all the technology knowledge and, and, and explore and solve some unique problem for enterprise. But for me, after so many roles uh, in the government, having so many challenges, I was looking for the next challenge. And uh, I think that I, I did the right choice. So it's, it's really interesting. I love uh, talking to founders about how ideas come about and we know and when you talk to vcs where founders have been in working they see a problem um, and then they want to solve that problem with technology you're in a greater position for success um, because you can go in and you can show people the problem rather than coming up with an idea um, and then selling that idea um, of technology to people so it's a great start what was the the catalyst behind pressing go? So you sat there, you're in the government, you're looking through, you're seeing the problems. But what, when did you realize that now was the right time to um, to go and do it? 
it's I think it's a it's a it's a problem or a challenge for many people that going out for the for the army and looking for yeah. what should I do I do now. So mm-hmm. I I've been and especially for people from A to hundred, uh, because they are they are doing or we are doing the impossible. So yeah. what is better than the impossible? Yeah. Um, in the civil sector, actually, the impossible is uh, being successful in, in startup. It's always you think that it's a it's a glory, and everybody that you heard about is very successful. But actually, it's very difficult, and it's completely completely different from what I I did. Yeah. So uh, solving very complicated uh, technological challenges completely different from doing business or having a product um, uh, which is sellable. Yeah. Somebody is willing to pay money and to, to, <laughs> to, uh, to get your product. Um, yeah, yeah so, so I thought that this could be the, the right challenge for me. Um, together with the vision, together with us uh, to, to do something which might help the society. Yeah. Um, so this is this was the uh, so the moment that I realized that I want to have my next challenge and to pick either to go to a, to a, um, executive role in the company, other company. I could I could pick many of them. Yeah. Or to to be in the um, to be alone with this uh, startup journey, uh, trying to collect some money um, yeah. with with a presentation and. Uh, it is difficult. It's difficult, and completely different from having this uh, power, or um, uh, when you are in the government, uh, completely different position. For sure, for sure. Um, so important part. You've, you know what you're wanting to do. You know you want to do it. How did the founding team come about? Because it's obviously it's an absolutely critical unit. Um, so. Were they with you in the art? How did how did that founding team come about? Yeah, so this is a great great question because it's not uh, it's not typical. Yeah, awesome. in many cases you know somebody for many years and uh, uh, you decide together to to leave the army and establish this uh, startup. Yeah. Um, in my case, I met a guy which lives in the UK. He's Israeli. I I didn't. Um, know him before he was a friend of a friend um, he had his startup after um, his story is also very very unique he mm. he, he moved to the to the UK to uh, to study in uh, Oxford University MBA he did it then mm. he convinced the university to establish the uh, ex- um, startup accelerator for software so he did it he managed it for six years and then he established his own startup and he was looking for someone to help him with cybersecurity. So I was his uh, um, cyber advisor uh, in his advisory board, ah. start, starting to work together and then understand that he had the same problem that every SMBs uh, have. And then I convinced him that it might be a good idea to try to solve this problem together and uh, and after one year of working together, I understood that he's the right person because um, I have a very solid technological background. He was, he has also, but he has also a business uh, experience. He knows how startups are um, uh, doing. He has some uh, first connection to the U- UK government, and we got the first money we got from Innovate UK. Nice, it was great. Um, it is really um, grant money. You don't have to give it back. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to give any IP. So it's excellent. Wish we had it in Israel as well. And uh, so this was uh, finding the right partner is the first thing. And, and then finding the, the right money. Yeah. And finding all the other people that could help you to execute. So that story, does, the way that's come about and the fact that your co-founder is based in London, there's another unique thing about uh, Synomi, and that is that you hire people across the globe, effectively, yeah. or particularly across um, Europe. Most early stage Israeli businesses wrap everything around in Tel Aviv. Um, it would be great to hear what made you go down that route. 
um, and what have been the advantages of going down that route? Yeah, yeah, it was it was not uh, as you say it was not a typical journey. Um, the fact that we had the first money from the UK, yeah, we hire people in the UK, which help us to uh, uh, to 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 start our journey, prove me that there are also other clever people out of Israel. Yeah. Um, uh, so this is the first point. Then the Corona came, and when the Corona came, everybody is working remotely. Yeah. So there's no advantage of being in Israel. Um, so what happened is that we created the management team in Israel, which is, I think it's very important to meet together several times a week, yeah. two times, three times. We still work uh, hybrid, but uh, creating um, a scalable R&D team that you could hire people anywhere in the globe and you're not restricted to the um, lack of talent uh, there are lots of good talent in Israel, but the competition is very, very big. Yeah. And currently, we could take people from Israel, from the UK, from East Europe. We know how to work remotely, and we could scale very fast. Um, so currently, we have a, a base in, in Israel, a um, small team of architectures in R&D. The, the most of the R&D team um, are in the UK. We have some R&D in Eastern Europe and some in India. Um, and it's like a salespeople. You have salespeople all over the world. The yeah. US salespeople should be in, in, in the US. The UK should be in the UK and Israel should be in Israel. And the fact that we manage uh, this, uh, uh, this team is uh, um, uh, very important. There are some disadvantages, of course. Mm -hmm. Maybe for me mentally, um, yeah. I would like to see my people. I'm a people person. So uh, uh, doing uh, we are doing every week. Um, uh, we call it um, uh, Sainomi Good Week. Yeah. Everybody's going, coming to the, um, to the great location of the Zoom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we see everybody. We try to talk about uh, our weekends like you are drinking coffee. Yeah, and the, it's nice, but it's not enough. So yeah. um, uh, having some kind of hubs, meeting together, have this create um, team uh, team building event. I think it's very important. Love that. Um, one of the really important parts, particularly, well, uh, at, at every stage of a uh, of a of a business, but when you're in the early stage, you are finding that culture. And that DNA of the business, and it's much easier when you're all in a room together. You know, particularly in Israel, five days a week, everyone's in there together um, doing it. How did you create the the the, the culture of Sinomi? Because also, when you've got people based in England, in Israel, in India, in Eastern Europe, you've got so many different cultures already of, of people of what they are. Plus, trying to create the one culture. So, how did you go about? creating that dna of sinomi yeah so uh, it's it's all it's all um talking about the hubs that we create we are creating in the different locations so most of the management team is in israel so we have the culture of managing fast um innovation thinking about new things mm. it is in israel the vp product vp r d um, marketing Part of the sales, because this is different because of the time zones, yeah. uh, are in Israel. The only manage, man, um, member of the management team is Roy, who is in the UK. And uh, we're trying to, uh, and he's coming to Israel every two months and we are me meeting together. So this is the ecosystem of management, which is very important. Yeah. Then we have the ecosystem of R&D. And the ecosystem of R&D is a remote uh, organization. So they meet every time for a stand-up uh, which is maybe it's not really a stand-up, but it's, yeah. uh, it's a meeting, everybody yeah. talking. Um, so this is a, dis a distributed uh, uh, organization which works very well. Yeah. The product in the R&D is together, or the, at least the management and the architecture in Israel. So, so we see that there are some parts that must be together and there are some parts that could be remote. The yeah. QA is in India, for example, but uh, the, the QA is joining the R&D teams and we don't see the difference between India and UK. Maybe it's the time zone, but yeah. except that 
it's uh, we, we feel the same so um yeah okay because one of the things that um the challenges that um through talking to israeli founders they have is that it's understanding and getting to grips with cultures outside of uh israel how important was that year advising and working with roy to understand obviously probably british people um and cultures which then enabled you to be able to hire people not within israel i guess that even though roy is an israeli lives in the uk he doesn't really know how americans or the us people are yeah. um, behave so and and most of our partners and customers are in the us uh, yeah. we have uh, a tenth of uh, um of partners Ninety uh, percent in the U.S. and trying to understand how they react, how to convince them uh, to buy Sainomi. It was really a challenge because we don't know what what does it mean. Interesting. We don't know what does it mean. No getting an email. Um, two weeks. Um, we like it very direct. We don't get it very direct. They are very very polite. Nice. Um, and and when you have some. Um, we have some customers in the uh, United uh, Emirates, so it's also completely different. You thought that you saw everything. I, I know the Americans, I know the UK people, but it's different, completely really? different. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and it's interesting. Um, I, I remember I had a conversation. We have some, some partners in, in the uh, UAE, and I told them, when you say today, do you mean today? They say no. I mean, it could be today, yeah. tomorrow, and maybe the day after. Yeah. They don't understand that when they say, okay, I will send it tomorrow, and they don't do it. Yeah. Why? Because tomorrow, it's it's probably this week. That's it. I uh, I learned that lesson uh, on a holiday to um, to the Caribbean, to the Dominican Republic. And um, uh, it, was, uh, it was an all-inclusive hotel. And one of the reps came around and I asked them something and they went off to do it about 20 minutes. They said it'd be a minute and about 20 minutes he came back and I was like, that was a long minute. And he goes, it's a Dominican minute. I said, I'll do it and I'll get to it. And I did. <laughs> We're in no rush. We're in the sunshine. And I was like the Dominican minute, <laughs> as long as you want it to be. Um, it's, it's fantastic. And also the challenge about the U S is that each state is a little bit different. Um, so when you're dealing with people in New York, they're different to San Francisco. They're different to uh, Austin, Texas. Um, so there's lots to take in. Um, I'd like to touch on when hiring, the hiring that you've done um, in these different locations. How have you found getting the interview process right when you're hiring people, probably without ever meeting them? It's difficult. Yes, very difficult. Not always successful. Yeah, as you know, as a recruiter, you could ask me about the, the most difficult moment for me as a founder is actually to fire people which are not, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, fit to the company. Uh, they are not a bad bad people. They are just not fit to uh, to say no me, and and it is difficult because I did almost everything I could in order to. Uh, to hire the right people. Um, and every time I'm getting uh, uh, improved and I, I, I have some consultant, HR consultant, how many interviews, what is the, how effective is an interview, how yeah. to, to understand the, the experience of this, uh, this person. So it's difficult. Mm -hmm. For example, recently I recruited several salespeople and uh, uh, I, I get this advice, if you need one, uh, hire two, because probably one will not be successful. So this is another strategy. Um, yeah. It's it's expensive strategy, yeah, because... Uh, it is, it is. Um, look, I know it, it, we'll, we'll touch on this um, later on. Um, I think there's a number of really good reasons as to why you should hire uh, two in the early stages. Um, of a, of a business sales to people, particularly in um, in North America, but it is a challenge. Um, and um, yeah, look, the the part about 
fire, firing people is is never nice um it's it's not you know everybody joins into the relationship of work with good intentions um around it and i also think 90 percent of the time um people um you 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 have them because they are good people um and um they're just not right for the role they haven't got the skill sets and you know particularly in early stage businesses you need that skill set um and the people to be right because it holds you back on the on, on the journey you're going on before we talk about hiring salespeople in in north america i always like to ask was there a couple of challenges that came up um as a ceo that you weren't expecting anything that you could advise people that are thinking on going a similar path and challenges that you've had to overcome and how you did it that you weren't necessarily expecting or maybe weren't necessarily expecting it to be such a challenge? I guess people, something which is very, very important, as we know, and picking the right people and have patience with people. And sometimes as a founder, you want to do it fast. Yeah. With people, it's never, it's never fast. No. Um, so so this, is, uh, um, this is one challenge. The roller coaster is another challenge yeah so you change your mood every day yeah so you could be um in the moon and then <laughs> and then a day later you feel that what what i'm going to do yeah. um so you have to be calm in i don't know how yeah so, uh, so to feel that everything wait waiting for another day yeah so things will be will be better and uh, during this year, which is a difficult year for startups, um, we, we, we talked about it uh, before. Yeah. I think to understand that you have to cross this year, do whatever you can. It's not all your fault. Yeah. It's, uh, it's um, um, something bigger than you. Yeah. Um, uh, it's make you feel that, uh, that you could get over. Yeah. Um, for Sainomi, I guess... Uh, the big, uh, the big challenge, and I think that's the big challenge for every company is product market fit. Yeah. Um, and even if you uh, think that your product is excellent, you need that many people would, would like it and would be able to pay for that. Yeah. I guess that asking many questions, not to think that what you did is the most clever thing, and to understand that there are lots of opinions in the market, and trying to be very, uh, um, very sensible, um, very careful, and willing to to lose time. So even if there is an extraordinary feature that you believe in, there's yeah. something else that should be done. So throw it away. Do something new. Um, so I think listening is very, very important. Uh, and this is for for every CEO. If you think that you are not doing the right thing. Only because you already started it and you have a vision, try to find uh, as fast as possible because you don't have what we don't have is time. Yeah, we we have some money, but we don't have time. If you waste the time, we lose lots of money. So <laughs> this yeah. is true. It's, it's it's such an important thing, and a lot of VCs and 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 second time founders. One of the biggest things they're saying is be talking to um, all your customers, potential customers, hear what they're saying and and adapt your your product. So many times have the product started in one thing and then shaped to something else because that's what people would yeah. buy. Um, so everything you're saying there is uh, so critical and, and, and so... I could, yeah, I could give you um, an example of our go-to-market, um, which is completely different from all my knowledge before. So uh, as you know, I'm from Israel, hmm. intelligence, government. What do I know about MSPs, managed service providers, and managed security service providers in the US? Completely nothing. And now I'm selling uh, what we call virtual CISO platform for to enable a new service to MSPs and MSSPs in the US. So imagine the journey that we did from um, enabling every SMB in the world to be better protected, yeah. to a very specific go-to market with uh, entities or companies that I don't know. I didn't work for MSP, MSSP. And uh, we have so many customers that need our solution. 
And maybe this is uh, the things that we have in Israel. The market is not in Israel. Yeah. Um, we have to think about the world, but we are not living there. So we have to listen. We have to uh, to go there. We have to. It's a very hard start. Yeah. Start. And then when you get it, you get it. Love it. Love it. I'd like to talk about your hiring um, of salespeople in, in, in North America um, uh, to understand your experience and then how you would look when, when looking to go in. When, so did you hire um, account executives into North America? Have you done that? Have you got boots on the ground? Yeah, yeah. So we, I think the first thing is to, to, uh, to hire the first one. Yeah. So the first one is very, very important. And fortunately, I found a friend. Yeah. And he worked for other cybersecurity uh, company as a channel, uh, head of channels, and he helped me in Sinomi. So I didn't know him for, for, for many years. So I worked with him for the last year. He helped me because he's a good person. Yeah. And uh, when I uh, had the budget to, uh, to, to support, to do this, the, the, first, uh, the first movement, uh, I, I asked him if he could, because he lives, he lives in the US. He's a Israeli, he has experience in cyber. So this is a perfect fit. This is not my first trial. Yeah, I had some uh, 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 um, another two trials before, which didn't succeed. So this is my third trial, and it's currently very successful. So this is the first the first step, and now we are in the expansion phase. So creating this uh, uh, this team with uh, uh, having more SDRs and account executives in the in the US. So I'll come on to why this one's probably worked because you've had a try. I call it the try before you buy. Um, so you you've kind of known and worked with that person for a um, for a year. The the other two that didn't work out. Um, how did you hire those? Did you use an agency? Um, did you do it yourself? Yeah. So so I used an agency, or I tried to use an uh, agency, and together with uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn um, posts. I think there were from from the LinkedIn and from referrals, so they're not this particular one would were not from um, agency, although I got many um, applications from agency. Um, it was very very difficult, very long process. Yeah, I think that I made some 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 mistakes. Maybe I didn't listen very carefully to the people that worked with this person before, mm. um, because. When you talk with salespeople, they always convince you that they are the best. Absolutely, show and show and tell. Americans are show and tell from when they go to school. Yeah, yeah. 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 But but talking with the previous um, employers, this is something that you must do. Yeah. Any even if it's difficult and uh, it's very uh, in in the middle of uh, his job and he couldn't give you any stories it's always stories yeah. don't go to this fast because it's very expensive to start this journey and after six months uh, uh you, you should hire uh, you, you should fire and yeah. then you lose time and time is the most precious time that you have time um particularly early on uh time yeah. is so critical and also um burnt leads um if they're the wrong salesperson trying to sell to to opportunities um that that don't work out it's very difficult to go back to those opportunities mm -hmm. and do that um it's really tough um finding the good the good sales people and and also it's not always about good sales people because there can be sales people that are amazing in some organizations but they're not right for your organization um, and that's why we always talk about um talent should get you an interview uh, but character should get you the job. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, and that's ultimately the important. And, and that's the biggest challenge of interviewing for character. It's really interesting. It's really easy to talk about experience and skill set, um, but it's harder to actually know the character that you're looking for and then identifying that characteristic in an interview process. Mm -hmm. And particularly with, you know, people who do tell a good story, um, it's getting under that and it's it's um we call it getting really under the bonnet and when you ask a question they give you an answer you question the answer yeah um so you sort of like i'm really going to find out um where the um where the truth lies on this and then also look it's better to 
terminate something after six months than try and go 12 months and try and make it work, which is where a yeah. lot of people go wrong. It's like, I always say, once you've made your sales higher, uh, you put the processes in place to make it break as quickly as possible. Because if it breaks, you get rid. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't break, you're in a you're in a good place. But you need you need to fail fast, um, and that's the ultimate. And and the thing being is, don't be afraid to fail. Um, you know, as long as you put everything into um, trying to get it right, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Just make sure you admit it and you just get it wrong and you yeah. and, and you shift on. Um, we're at the point now before I um, get to us about the journey, where you guys are going and expansion, probably uh, in, in North America by the what you alluded to uh, a few minutes ago. We're at the opportunity where we uh, switch around um, and you get to ask me uh, any question that you have always wanted to ask a recruiter. What is the real statistics for hiring salespeople using your agency? So people telling that the statistic would be 90% that you not succeed, 50%. Yeah. Um, convince me to next time to come to you. Or do you have a fantastic statistics that could prove me that you should always go to a to us. Uh, what's a great question. So globally, 45% of uh, sales hires in growth companies. So from and that kind of covers from uh pre-seed to kind of series c um 45 percent won't see their first anniversary um mm. and that'll be for a number of reasons uh wrong fit no good uh or they found a better opportunity um and, and moved on um so we sit at over 93 percent are still employed uh 15 months after we've placed them. Again, um, so, 93, 93%. Yeah. Comparing to 45. Yeah. It's big. It's definitely. Um, so it comes down to detail. Um, we don't work with everybody. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's finding. So that's where we work really hard on uh, finding the right person, the right character. Um, mm -hmm. The thing being is that what I say is when you're hiring salespeople, You'll have all characteristics and you'll look at how your business is and what you're looking to do. But there'll be a couple of key traits that we say that most salespeople, or I would say, if you can, all salespeople will have. There's two characteristics that you can't move away from. Um, work ethic, okay? Um, and that's from not being able to go and find your own leads, um, win new logos. Um, in America, they'll call it like being a hustler, like just getting there and going. There. And, and the second one is intelligence. OK, because people will put a lot of emphasis on I need someone who's got experience or someone who knows how to sell to a CISO. No, you don't. You need someone who's intelligent. An intelligent person can learn something. OK, nobody was born like you You, you look at all the people that you were with in the military. Nobody was born an expert in cybersecurity. Right. They learned it. So therefore, mm -hmm. someone can learn it. Now, there's obviously a scale of time. So it's like, how quickly can someone pick something up if they're so far away, removed from it? Um, but it's understanding that. And that's where we help um, founders understand where the levels of intelligence need to be or knowledge of, of certain areas. So, so we look at work ethic and intelligence. OK, that is where you're building your high performers uh, from. OK, so that's where we look for. And once we we know that we've got that and we know what the plan is, also where we help is that it's the onboarding and a lot of people do make the right hires but what they do is there's your laptop off you go and there isn't the 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 onboarding process in making sure that people really understand the tech and test them on the technology you know one of the really great things that um uh good uh sales leaders and founders do is after three months they say right you're gonna um phone me up as though i'm a client you're going to pitch a meeting and then you're going to do a meeting. You're going to do a demo. Okay. You're going to see how much you've learned and yeah. do you use me. So you, you're, you're testing and seeing where they are. You're getting them talking to the product team um, uh, day in, day out. So they really understand what they are, uh, what they're selling. Because in today's world, we are solving problems with technology. 
but you've got to know what the technology does yeah to solve the uh to solve the problem um so yeah so 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 look our our, our statistics are are good we are you know we're not a huge organization um but we we work hard to make sure that we uh we place the um the right people Great, great. Great question. I uh, hope that answers it for you. Love to hear what's next. Like we are in a, a challenging environment. Um, I, 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 I probably buck the trend a little bit. I like a challenging environment. I think um, it's the survival of the fittest. It kind of writes the market uh, in, to a certain degree. But where are you guys at? You've got some good funding. Um, what's your what's your growth plans? Yeah, so currently we see a lot of interest from the market. So uh, so for Sainomi, actually it's a good year awesome. um, this year. Um, we don't want to get any more money this year because we think that the, the climate will be better next year. We are getting there. We're having more and more customers. Uh, we will get the um, our target ARR soon. And uh, probably next year we'll go to the next uh, to the next round. Excellent. Yeah, it's it's I uh, you know we talk to VCs all the time, um, and I think the longer, particularly at the moment, the longer you can stay away from it, um, and also build your ARR up um, so that you know if you only need funding to grow, not to pay salaries and to keep yeah. the door open, yeah, you're in better. such a better position when you go and ask uh, for, for money and you're going to get terms which are, are more your side. I think two years ago, terms were more on the side of the founder and it's obviously on the VC now because of the risk yeah. side of it. Um, but if you've got the ARR um, and you're building through that, and the thing being is where the, the, the VCs are looking at now is, right, how scalable is your ARR? Did the founder do all the sales? Or have you got someone who was nothing to do with the business at the start, a salesperson? Have they come in and have they managed to sell? Because then it's like, okay, cool. That makes a difference. That means that other people can do it. That means that we can um, yeah. scale. Yeah. If it's just founder-led sales, it's good, but it's not proof of scale because I'll always say it. And, and I talked to you like, you know, you mentioned yourself, like, um, you know, you've got no sales experience coming out of the military, but the founders will always be the best sellers because it's their baby it's their passion of, um, of what it is. So um, if you've got someone who's not the best salesperson selling, you're in a really good place. Yeah. And I must say that currently I'm not the, the best salesperson in the company, which is good. I was that person before, but now yeah. most of the era yeah. are coming from me. And that's give me some time to think about strategy to, uh, to create new um, um, chains of revenue. Um, so, yeah. That's awesome. And look, I think you've got this, this salesperson in the US, which is obviously doing well, but the, you know, normally I, I hear talking to, um, uh, to founders, particularly from Israel, where they say, I've hired someone I know. And it's like, oh, okay. So you've hired someone you know, like, and trust, not necessarily someone who can do the job. But the fact that you've worked with that person in the build up to it, that's the critical difference there yeah. is seeing someone you've you've known what they're like, what their behaviors are. Um, and also, like there's a key characteristic in that, um, which is vital, um, which won't often get looked at. But someone did something for you for nothing to start with. That's a sign of a really good person you know, who's willing to go out their way and help you and not mm -hmm. expect something in, in return yeah. for it. Um, so I think you've, you, you know, in, in the way of that, you've, you've dotted the I's and crossed the T's um, of someone, um, which is in no doubt, probably the person who's your best salesperson now. Um, they also knew you guys knew the product better. Um, so it's a really good hire. Um, and it was probably all down to timing as well, where you had the funding and they were probably available for something to happen and you've made it, you've made it work. So um, in this instance, that's absolutely the right thing to, um, to do. Um, and, um, you know, if you, you know, that is, you know, when you grow as a business, there's needs to be lots of different ways in which you do it. 
um, and uh, and doing it that way is, uh, is a really good way. David, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, really excited about where you guys go. Thank you very much for taking your time out to talk to us. I know you uh, your time must be pretty precious as it is because you've got people all over the place in terms of time zones. Um, uh, and I know you like to, uh, to, to give face time to everybody. So thank you very much for uh, taking time and sharing your story because it is a different story to a lot of the cyber tech and, 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 and other tech companies that are coming out of uh, Israel. So it's fascinating to, uh, uh, to hear and, uh, and see you guys doing so well, because um, you are doing brilliantly well um, for where you're at and, and age of the company. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, James. It was a pleasure for me to be here and thank you for the opportunity.